When you animate 3D objects inside Photoshop, your goal is to export those animations as either video files or still image sequences. I'm going to explain how you export to video files in this lesson and to still image sequences in the next lesson. To follow along, go to Working Files, go to Photoshop Projects, and go on down to Render Animation right there. This is a very basic animation, just one second long. I'll open up the timeline here by double clicking on the tab. It says 10 seconds there, but we're just going to do one second of the 10. That's because the work area bar here is set to just one second. I'll scroll down here a bit and we'll show you the keyframes for the mesh. I'll turn them back on by clicking there. And there are those four keyframes that allow this thing to spin around once. Like so. One full rotation. All right, we're going to export this one second thing here as two different video files. To do that, we're going to go up to File, Export, Render Video. Now here we go again with those two words, Export and Render. We're going to export these animations by rendering them. So we go over here and click Render Video. Opens up this dialog box. We need to give the file a name, so I'm taking the default name, RenderAnimation.mp4. We're going to do H.264 first here, which creates MP4 MPEG files. I'm going to put it in the My Photoshop Exercise Files folder. We're working with the Adobe Media Encoder here as opposed to the Photoshop Image Sequence. So we'll go back here to the Media Encoder, and we're going with H.264. Our choices are DPX or QuickTime or H.264. We're going with H.264 first. We'll do QuickTime in a moment, then DPX in the next lesson. H.264 has some advantages over QuickTime because it has so many presets. We're going with what's called high quality here. But if you open this up, you'll see it has many, many other ones here. High quality will be our choice here. We'll go with the document size that we have, 1200 by 1200. We'll go with 30 frames per second, which is kind of standard. We're going with progressive, which is the standard way to make videos these days. And we'll have an aspect ratio of square pixels. The range is the work area that we selected there that's one second long. Zero to 29 is 30 frames. And then the render options are 3D quality. We have no alpha channel option here. You do have that with QuickTime though, which is a good thing. And then down here we go 3D quality, ray trace draft. We have three choices, interactive, draft, or final. This is kind of the middle ground here. Interactive works well with games. Final is really high quality and takes a long time. Draft for this one second thing will take about two minutes per render. So we'll take draft. And then we'll click Render. And off it goes. We get a little progress bar here. And it'll take about two minutes to get to the end there. So I'll just fast forward to that point and we'll take a look at the video. So I've got QuickTime open down here. Go to the Exercise Files folder and open it up here. And double click on this to get it full screen and click this. And there is our animation. One second long. Try it again. So let's close that down. Okay, go back to Photoshop and we'll export this as a QuickTime file. File, export, render video. And we'll go over here and instead of H.264, we'll choose QuickTime. We'll change this to MOV. We'll put it in the same folder here. And we'll do the same routine down here. But the one change I want to make is that I want to give it an alpha channel, which is really a good thing about QuickTime. You can export videos that have transparency. So I'll go down here and take a straight unmatted alpha channel. We could use pre-multiplied, which blends it with kind of a matte and makes it smoother around the edge. But I want to have a hard edge here. I'll take unmatted. And now I'll click render. And this will go for about a couple minutes as well. And when it's done, we'll go take a look at it. All right, let's minimize this and take a look at that one now. Go to my folder there. And there it is, MOV. If I double click on that, it'll try to open up in the media player and it won't work. But we'll try it again inside the QuickTime player. Over here, File, Open. There's the MOV file. Double click on that. We'll click on this over here and we'll play that. And the thing is, you can't tell that there's a transparency here because it automatically has a black background inside this player. But you can tell it's got a transparent background if you open it up in a video editing product. And I've got Premiere Pro running in the background here. Let me go get that. There we go. Let's just import that file. We'll bring in that MOV file there. We'll make a quick sequence out of this really quickly. So you can take a look at it. There it is. I'll just expand the view bit so you can see our one second clip there. And you see it playing up here with a black background. But I'm going to change that background here by putting in a color background. We'll go get some color matte here. and make it blue so you can see it better. We'll add that color matte here below this guy so we can see that video on top, there you go, the blue text on top of that color background. So it is transparent, which is a good thing if you want to just export some text like this or some other animation without a background. 
You can do it with a transparency like this and then put it in a video editing program like this. And notice that the drop shadow is showing up here. Very nice. All right, so that's how you export a Photoshop 3D animation to either an MP4 file or an MOV file.